the Shabab, they are a powerful force. They are a burning flame. They are in fact overflowing passion and zeal and sincerity which sometimes need to be bound by the bounds of the Qur'an and the Sunnah and guidance of the ulama. For this reason, our Messenger والسلام, He gave the youth very special treatment. Very special treatment. Because it was upon their backs which the da'wah was established from the very first day. Did you know? Take this with me now. Did you know that our beloved Muhammad والسلام, when he received the very first verse of revelation which marked his prophethood, he was at the age of 40. This is what the scholars they call Sinn al Shabab, the age in which youthhood becomes complete. He was a Shab, he was a youth. Abi Bakr al Siddiq, when he took his Shahada and became a Muslim, and became the greatest human being to walk the face of this globe after the prophets and messengers. How old was he? He was 37 years old. Shabab, Umar ibn Khattab, when he took his Shahada, in fact, shook the whole of Arabia with his Shahada. Umar ibn Khattab, whom when Shaytan would see him walking on a particular route, Shaytan would cross the road and take a different route. Umar is here. Umar ibn Khattab, whom Suhaib al Rumi commentated about his Islam and said something so beautiful. He says, Lama aslama Umar, Zahar al Islam, wa du'ya ilayhi alaniya, wa jalasna hilaqan hawl al Ka'ba, wa tufna bil bayti, wa antasafna wa radadna ala man ghalaba alayna. He says, When Umar became a Muslim, when Umar ibn Khattab took his shahada, listen, Islam became prevalent. Allah with one shahada, Islam, the whole of the deen, became prevalent. And we were able, for the first time, to invite to Islam publicly. And we would sit around the Kaaba in halaqas, in gatherings of knowledge, for the first time. And we would do tawaf circumambulate around the house publicly without fear, and we would also respond to anybody who was nasty with us. This was the shahada of one man. How old was Umar when he took his shahada? The shahada which Abdullah ibn Mas'ud also says about it. Wallahi ma zinna a'izzahu fu aslam Umar. By Allah, we have remained, he says. By Allah, we have remained in a state of dignity and pride and izzah from the day which Umar ibn Khattab took his shahada. How old was this giant when he became a Muslim? 27 years old. La ilaha illallah. Ali ibn Abi Talib. The Saracen of this Ummah, when he stepped into the bed of our beloved Alayhi Salatu Wasalam, and the pagans were surrounding the house as our Prophet was going to make a safe escape, to make the hijrah, him and his beloved companion Abu Bakr to Medina, and Ali ibn Abi Talib, may Allah be pleased with him, creeps into his bed to sacrifice and put his throat on the line as opposed to the throat of Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam and the pagans they break into the home like very hungry and very thirsty wolves to lay down their very sharp edged swords on Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam only to find that it was Ali ibn How old was this Saracen? How old was this warrior when he did this act? He was 23 years old. 23 years old. Mus'ab ibn Umayr. Mus'ab ibn Umayr, who had the whole future of Islam placed in his hands by the Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam. When he was given the enormous task of making his way to a land called Yathrib, a land which we call Medina today, entrusting him with the da'wah of, entrusting him with the responsibility of planting the seed of da'wah in this very fertile land to receive the persecuted Muslims from Mecca to Medina and to receive the Messenger of Allah where Medina would then become the capital of the Islamic Ummah. How old was this Shah? How old was this youth when he began this invitation? The invitation, the outcome of which the whole of Medina, if not at least the majority of Medina, became Muslim Muslim and Mus'ab ibn Umayr hadn't even hit 20 years old. Usama ibn Zayd. And I'm mentioning these names because our topic is Shabab, Hawla Rasul, youth around the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. These are the youth of yesterday. Usama ibn Zayd, he was given the 
enormous task of leading the Muslim armies against one of the superpowers of the time, the Romans, or Rome, one of the most ferocious armies known at the time. And under Osama, under Osama's leadership would be Abu Bakr ibn Siddiq, would be Umar ibn al-Khattab, would be Uthman ibn Affan and Ali. How old was Osama when he was entrusted with this enormous, enormous, spine-breaking task? He was 18 years old. 18 years old, la ilaha illallah, and then you have Ja'far ibn Abi Talib. Ja'far, you can say, was the very first ambassador of Islam. When he was sent to a land which they do not know as Arabs, to address a people in a language which they do not recognize, and to speak in the presence of a king whom they do not know, a climate they do not know, a land they do not know, a strangeness in every aspect. This was the land of Abyssinia. And this king was al Najashi bin Abis. The persecution had reached its height in Mecca, and the Muslims can barely bear it now. So the Prophet sends the Muslims in a small delegation to Abyssinia and convinced the king with a very eloquent presentation to accept the refuge of these poor persecuted Muslims. Ja'far ibn Abi Talib makes his way to Abyssinia to Africa with a small delegation of Muslims. And I want you now, my brothers and sisters, to travel with me with your imagination and minds. As you imagine a small group of Muslims in the presence of a king and his ministers and his consultees, and the king is sat on his throne and he has his crown and his cage, and there is a sense of hate and all to the whole atmosphere. And now it is one shot or nothing. It is everything or nothing. And they now need to present him with Islam. And the Jashi, the king, he begins the conversation. And he says, Tell me about this religion of yours which you have adopted. Because you see, my brothers and sisters, what the pagans of Mecca did, they sent two men from Quraysh to follow the Muslims in Abyssinia. They were so angry. How can the Muslims even think about going to a different land and starting a new area there? So they sent two, two men, and with them were gifts and leather in order to bribe the king to send back these ghibbaun sufaha, these foolish children, as they called them, back to their parents in Mecca, where the persecution shall continue. The king, he is a just man, however. He said, I need to hear from them first. So the king, he said, tell me about this religion of yours, this newly invented religion, Islam, which neither me or your parents in Mecca or anything else seems to follow. What is this? And Ja'far ibn Abi Talib begins. And he says something so beautiful. Tell me if you have heard any diplomacy like this. He says, Ayyuh al Malik, O king, inna kunna ahla jahiliyyah. Oh, your majesty, we used to be a very ignorant people. We used to worship idols and stones and rocks. And we used to eat dead meat. And we used to cut our ties with our families. And we used to speak ill. And we used to be evil to our neighbors, and the strong ones among us would oppress the weak. This was our situation. We remained like this for your majesty. In this state of ignorance until Allah, he sent to us a messenger from him. A messenger whom we know of his truthfulness and his sincerity and his kindness and his purity. And then he commanded us to worship Allah and single him out in worship. And to put aside all of these stones and all of this polytheism and shift which our parents used to be upon. And he commanded us and he commanded us, he says, to be good to our family, to 